Good evening and welcome to the Reformation Charlotte podcast. It is Tuesday, July 27th, 2021. Today I want to talk about another Gospel Coalition contributor. Her name is Rachel Gilson. We've written about her before. Rachel Gilson is a director of theological development Northeast, who and she works for Crew. That is that's formerly Campus Crusade for Christ. Um, she has written numerous articles and contributed many videos for the Gospel Coalition. She also contributes for John Piper's Desiring God. Now, Rachel Gilson is an ex-lesbian. That is, she describes herself as someone who is attracted to women still. However, she did end up marrying a man and having children with a man. Um, she's a, a, a very interesting character. Um, in, in the past, she has taken the position that if homosexuals come to Christ after they get married, it is okay for them to stay married because God hates divorce. Uh, that is her position. Um, that is on a video that has since been taken down from the original link on Vimeo. Uh, that being said, today we're going to cover a different video that Rachel uh, has put up for the Gospel Coalition. And this video is, Should I Refer to tran Transgender People by Their Preferred Pronouns? Now this is a growing movement in evangelicalism. Um, there is a movement to accept transgender people as being normal, um, as not being, as not being so much a sin as much as it is an ailment and it's, it's who they are. And for us to be loving to them according to this movement, is to be hospitable. Now, this is what people like uh, former Southern Baptist President J.D. Greer and um, his other colleagues, such as Rosaria Butterfield, call pronoun hospitality. That is, we treat people who are sexually confused lovingly and hospitably by essentially lying to them and creating more confusion in them by affirming their preferred pronouns. So if it's a, a man who is sexually confused and believes he's a woman, in their mind it is loving to call them a she or a her if that's what he prefers okay so I, i'm gonna play this video for you and and we'll do some commentary throughout it i think the question of preferred pronouns is probably one of the most difficult to answer well in a space like this and i mean like in a digital question and answer type space and part of the reason i think that's true is because it really can come down to a question of conscience. So if you've uh, done a quiet time recently in the weak brother, strong brother passages of scripture, um, Paul has a category for the reality that some Christians are gonna come to issues and fall in different spots. Okay, so it, it, in these people's minds, sexual immorality is an issue that Christians can agree to disagree on. It's not like it's clear in Romans 1 you know how what God thinks about sexual immorality. It's not like it's clear you know all throughout God's law what he thinks about homosexuality and sexual perversion. No. To these people it's a matter of conscience. Somebody can can think that they're a woman and dress like a woman and still be a man and it's a matter of conscience if we want to 
pretend with them that they're really a woman if he's really a man. And one of the most important questions there is how are we going to relate to each other when we fall in different spots? So on the one hand, some of us would feel incredibly compromised using a transgender person's preferred name or pronouns because it feels like we're complicit in a lie. If it, it, it doesn't just feel like we're complicit in a lie. You are complicit in a lie. Unless you really think that it's possible for a man to be a woman or a woman to be a man, then you have to think in your own mind that you're lying when you use preferred pronouns for somebody who doesn't know what they are sexually. It feels like we're breaking the ninth commandment, right? Like we're bearing false witness uh, about a neighbor. And we need to take that really, really seriously. It is ne never safe to go to a place that your faith doesn't allow you, right? To go against your conscience. Your faith, your conscience, that, because that's what it is. It's not clear in scripture. It's just a matter of conscience. Look. She's going to say in a few minutes that uh, this is a question that the church has never had to answer before. You know, like all throughout biblical history, the church has never dealt with sexual immorality. Like, let's just delete. Romans chapter 1 from the scripture. The church has never had to deal with homosexuality. God never destroyed two cities because of homosexuality and sexual perversion. No, it's just never been dealt with. But I digress. We'll, we'll get there in a minute. And if that is your position. If that's your position. You it's not. See, here's the thing. It's not our position. We're not free to have our own position on this. We don't have the authority to be subjective when it comes to what God thinks about an issue like this. You see, because as Christians, in fact, as creation, really, we're obligated, we're obligated to obey God. But as Christians, we should not even have to question this. We should be seeking God's position and holding to that, full stop, period. There is no room for disagreement when it comes to God's law. There's no room for disagreement. Now, I'm glad that Rachel Gilson is no longer a practicing lesbian. However, if memory serves me right, I do believe that she describes herself as someone who's still attracted to women. And some of the things that, that she's pushed through the Gospel Coalition, and, and I'll bring them up here in a minute, uh, John Piper's website, uh, Desiring God, and, and how homosexuals can stay married after they come to Christ because God hates divorce. That is a perversion. That is a perversion of what God has to say about marriage. Because under no circumstances ever is a homosexual marriage a marriage to begin with. God hates that. And believe me, he made provisions for divorce. N not many. They're, they're few. But there, there is a provision to, for divorce. There is no prov provision at all for homosexuality. You have to recognize that when you are interacting with a transgender person, you're inability to use their preferred name or, proton, uh, or pronoun could actually be received as very offensive by them. Or Who did Jesus say he was? I believe he said that he was the rock of offense. He didn't come here to please you and to affirm you and to tolerate you because you are in sin. That is not what he came for. So who cares if they're offended by the truth? If the truth offends you, you need it to offend you because that's how the sort of division works. That's how God's word works. 
it pierces you. It pricks your conscience. And it's either going to drive you to the cross or it's going to drive you away from it. But either way, God's word does what it does. And God will be glorified. Deeply hurtful by them. And so I would encourage people in that category to think, okay, well, my truth is clear. How can my how can I communicate clearly the grace of Christ here? How can I go above and beyond to show love, knowing that my posture and pronouns is going to be tricky for the person that I'm talking with? Others of us have no problem at all using preferred name and pronouns. We're like, yes, this is a way of showing love. I'm ready to do this. You know what God calls that? Well, actually, you know what the Apostle Paul calls that? It's practicing cunning. He says it's underhanded and disgraceful, and it needs to be renounced. And in that case, your conversation part... That's 2 Corinthians 4, by the way. ...partner is probably easily going to feel loved and accepted by you. So then I... Who cares if they feel loved or accepted by you? Are they going to be loved and accepted by God if they're unrepentant? No! So why should we care if they feel loved? Feel. First of all, that's the problem is feel. You got the wrong idea of love. Love is not a feeling. We should not be worried about how they feel. We should be worried about God's truth. Understand? Because God's love for us is not a feeling it is an action it is what he did at the cross he died on the cross he didn't come down to make us feel loved he came down to prick our conscience with the truth die on the cross for our sins and call us to repent and believe in him and if we don't we are in a bad place I would challenge you, since you have access to the heart of your friend, what would it mean for you to use that access to have truthful conversations, either about who Christ is, maybe if you feel competent about the nature of the body, even just beginning conversations of... But you're not having truthful conversations if you're calling a man a woman, if you're calling a man she or her if your friend has thought about how God relates to these questions in their lives. But no matter where we come down, I want us to be able to relate to each other with honor and respect because the church has not had to answer these questions before. There we go. The church has not had to answer these questions before. Because, you know, God's wrath is not poured out on, on all creation because of our sin and we're not turned over to our lust of the hearts and given to impurity because of our perversions and immorality no we've never had to deal with this before the church in 2000 years since Christ and 6000 years before Christ has never had to deal with homosexuality Four. And we, <laughs> we need to have grace with each other, right? We know that God loves desperately the transgender people in our lives. And so we need to be thinking as a community, how can we... Ex this is a whole topic that I'm not really going to get into right now, but this idea that... that the the way that they push this idea that God just desperately loves all of these unrepentant sinners is just not biblical. Now, yes, God does have a general love for the world. And from a biblical perspective, God's call to repentance and faith is universal and God does not desire 
for any to perish. And he does not take delight in that. But this idea that God is just sitting up there desperately loving these people while at the same time the scriptures are clear that he's hardening some of these people's hearts. I mean, sure, God can save anyone, but a lot of these people, he's, he's working on hardening their hearts. If, if he loves everybody, why does he harden their hearts? If you deny that fact, if you deny that truth, you're not understanding scripture right. You're not understanding who God is. And I, like I said, I'm not going to get into this right now, but this I, I think we can all agree that this idea that God's just sitting up there wishing and begging and loving and hoping that all of these people will, will understand the truth and that we have to lovingly just try to draw them into it somehow and, and God is just sitting up there helplessly, desperately loving and trying to get all of these people to come to him but he needs us to be cunning and and underhanded about it no give it up woman give it up expose them and see these people at the gospel coalition they call themselves reformed they're not reformed these people don't understand none of them the tim kellers the D.A. Carsons, down to even the Albert Mollers and, and the Jared Wilsons and everybody else that, who call themselves Reformed over at the Gospel Coalition, they might be able to spout off the doctrines of grace. They may be able to do that. But they don't live and act and evangelize like they believe them. That's the bottom line. They really do not act like Reformed people. Um. To the love that we have received ourselves. I think. Okay, so I'm going to bring up, or I'm going to see if I can bring up. Okay, that's that article about where she said that it's okay for homosexuals to stay married after they come to Christ because God hates divorce. And yeah, she removed that video because there was just so much. Well, the bottom line is is the Gospel Coalition knows it's, it's dumb. And, you know, when, when we bring something up and it gets covered, they they try to hide from it instead of deal with it. That's That's pretty par for the course for them. Okay. This is the other article I wanted to bring up here. This is Rachel Gilson again, who works for Crew, um, another another Crew worker named Grant Hartley, a homosexual. Who, by the way, Grant Hartley, Hartley, this this homosexual, he he's now a, a Roman Catholic, but he's a former Crew worker. I don't know if he still works for Crew or not, um, but uh, Rachel Gilson does. He put up his tweet. That says there is no command in scripture to be straight there is a command to be faithfully single or faithfully married and you can do either of those without being straight again the idea here with these people is that homosexuality is not a sin so long as you don't act out on it is what what they're what they're trying to say you can be same-sex attracted you can desire another man if you're a man you can desire another woman if you're a woman you can desire to be sodomized by another man if you're a man and so long as you only desire it but you don't actually act out on it you're not in sin that's that's what that's what they think and that is the idea that they continue to push and you can either stay single and not act out on your sexuality or you or they're saying you can They'll, they'll say you can be homosexual but still marry somebody of the opposite sex. That, that's kind of the, the point that they're making here. But you can still be attracted to people of the same sex while you're married to somebody of the opposite sex. And somehow that's faithful. 
Um, of course, we know that that's not true. Uh, again, Romans 1, it deals with the attraction point blank. It's It says, it, it calls, the Apostle Paul calls them dishonorable passions. And that's in the ESV. The King James is vile affections. Um, and there, there are other translations that say other things, but, but you get the point. Homosexual attraction is still homosexuality. And they push this as though you can still identify as a homosexual. You could live practically a homosexual life. Uh, be part of the LGBTQ LMNOP community and still be a faithful Christian as long as you're not practicing bodily penetration with somebody of the same sex. That's the bottom line with these people. Um, there's another article here that uh, Rachel Gilson put up at John Piper's Desiring God website. Um, yeah, this is a, about the transgenderism thing again. She, here's what she wrote at at Desiring God, and and I'll that link is right here um, on my website. But here's how I covered it like two years ago. Um, she wrote, "How do you know you are a woman or a man?" Perhaps he would simply say, because of my body. After all, the physical differences between males and females are not difficult to spot. This objective physical reality is what the word sex describes. Yet many of us concede that we also feel like a man or a woman. How do we describe this feeling? Surely it doesn't have to mean full alignment with the qualities of our culture often assigns to men and women. Though transgender is an umbrella term for many experiences, at its most basic, it describes people whose internal subjective sense of gender or identity does not match the objective sex they were born into. Then she goes on to say, the ways we live out our given sex in the world is commonly known as gender. Gender can be manifested in how we dress, the hobbies we have, the roles we play. We fall all along the spectrum of how closely we align to various and changing cultural gender expectations and expressions. This is normal. So what Rachel Gilson is doing here is distinguishing between biological sex and gender. So what she's doing is affirming transgenderism and separating it from separating the idea that one's or or she's creating the idea that one's gender can be independent of their biological sex and th this is what the transgender community and I, I use that term loosely community but this is what the transgender community is after is this full acceptance or I of this idea that you can be subjectively whatever you want to be regardless of how God made you and she says this is normal but this is not normal. This is sin. This is a result of the fall. Confusion is a result of the fall. Sexual immorality is a result of the fall. Perversion and transgenderism and every form of sin you can think of, they're, they're all a result of the fall. And we don't have the right to try to water those down and pretend like they're not a big deal and separate 
the, what's in our mind from, from what God says about it. So yeah, so this idea of, of of gender fluidity that's that's what she's pushing and uh here here's what I wrote teaching that gender is independent of biological sex is the exact opposite of a biblical worldview on sexuality. Gender is not fluid. Your gender is your sex. And the Bible tells men to act like men. Why? Because your gender is your sex. You don't get to choose how you want to act based on how you feel. And I'll just pull this verse up here that I quoted. It's 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. Um, and if acting like men doesn't really mean anything, then... Why is it in the Bible? Uh, um, yeah, I, re I remember when Al Mohler came out and contradicted J.D. Greer on that too with the preferred pronoun nonsense. Um, Al Mohler is a peculiar character. Um, the thing with Al Mohler is most of the time he lands on the right side on the on the right side of an issue. But I've said this numerous times. Al Mohler always waits until something blows up in your face before he addresses it. Um, this is the same thing with the woke stuff. I mean, he's come out and said some some seemingly good things about it, but not till years after it blew up and has practically ripped the evangelical church apart. Now he comes out and says something, and he wonders why he doesn't win. Well, he probably doesn't. He knows why he doesn't win the uh, Southern Baptist presidency because people don't want people don't want a moderate. People do not want moderates anymore. It's the same way. It's funny how the Southern Baptist Convention and the United States of America both recently had elections and they practically mirrored each other. The Southern Baptist Convention is split right down the middle with the conservatives moving. Well, conservatism is conservatism. There's, there's not a lot of room... It, because everything's you're either conservative or you're a little bit liberal if that makes sense but you got the conservatives who stand strong and then you got all these other people who have moved so far to the left that the divide is just it's way out here now so people don't want somebody here in the middle people either want a conservative a very strong conservative or they want a far left and in the Southern Baptist Convention, it was very narrowly split between the conservative candidate and the um, progressive candidate, Ed Litton. And Ed Litton ended up with, and you've, I mean, we've covered, been covering it for two months now, the plagiarist, the serial plagiarist of the Southern Baptist Convention. Yay. You know, he represents us so well. He's just such a great moral man and he's going to lead the denomination now and be the face of the de denomination and turn us into this great moral face of the church and you know but he's a serial plagiarist I'm going to ignore that part anyway I digress um where was I uh yeah yeah, people don't people don't want a moderate. They they want somebody who's either all the way on their side, or the other people are going to get somebody that's all the way on their side. There's no room for bridge builders anymore, and we see this in scripture. Um, truth eventually is going to pierce this false unity that holds people together and 
if you're not united around one single truth and you don't have that glue that holds you together and you divert from that truth because that's the only thing that 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 the sword is not going to pierce is what's true everything else is going to pierce and it's going to rip it apart so when that sword comes in and it, it, it of the truth and it comes in and it starts ripping apart all of this progressive nonsense it just pushes those people further and further and further to the left and that's what's happening people are tired of, of this fence riding nonsense and like I said what's happening in the Southern Baptist Convention and other denominations as well is an exact mirror of what's going on in America in our US elections you got people moving further and further and further to the left and there's just not a lot of middle ground anymore and that's just the way it is and it's only gonna get worse and worse and worse so these days of everybody getting along and finding common ground <laughs> I hate to say it but those days are over those days are over and you better buck up you better buckle up and be ready for this ride because we got a long way to go and and it, right now God is separating the sheep from the goats and you're gonna get picked out of a crowd if you're if you're a Christian who stands on biblical principles if you're a Christian who does not believe it's okay to use transgender pronouns or if you think that homosexuality should not be celebrated in your five-year-old classroom in public school you are going to be the minority and you are going to be shunned and you are going to be driven underground and at some point it's going to get so bad that they're going to want to kill us all so I really hope I really hope that you Christians are ready for this persecution is coming folks and I kinda got off subject here but uh, this needs to be said persecution is coming and I really hope that you're ready and our only answer is the cross Jesus Christ who came to live the perfect life that we could not live who bore the wrath of God on the cross the wrath that we should have taken the wrath that we deserved God poured out on his son and the Bible says God says it pleased him to crush his son it pleased him it pleased him to pour out his wrath and all his hatred and all his his anger on his own son who was innocent so that people like you and me could live oh God be ready he died for you be ready to die for him and that's all I got for tonight I thank you for listening if you made it this far thank you um, if you like my channel again I'm, I'm trying to do more with this subscribe share support whatever you can do um, pray but I love you all. Thank you and have a good night.